think we are ready to get started. Uh, Assalamualaikum and uh, good evening, uh, depending where you are. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for the first webinar series in 2022 with the team of Multiverse, the Digital Twins. For those of you who just joined us, welcome. Uh, for those who are already uh, joining us before, welcome back. Uh, and my name is Ahmad Sharainon Muhammad Sharani. I'm currently working uh, with Microcops Yang Berhad. Uh, I will be your moderator for this webinar today. And as an introduction, uh, we are uh, Microcops Yang Berhad and we are a solution provider for the integrated workplace management solutions. I would like to thanks to CIDB for the opportunity to be our, to be our partner in organizing this uh, fruitful webinar. In today's session, we are going to discuss the topic uh, Travels to the Digital World. Uh, we have been hosting a series of webinars successfully since 2021, and they have been well received by people from a wide range of industry. Uh, this webinar aims to explore how these intelligent digital assets and digital collaborative uh, processes are enabling the innovation and disruption in our industry today. Uh, the world of facility management is going digital again. Travels in the digital world helps organizations deliver their message across the right channels in the right way and in the right time as a digital technology uh, continue to develop. So those the, so those, the opportunity it continue to create for the people we work with. Uh, this include the opportunity to connect with others, explore views and experience and host discussion online under Represented topics, geographies, and language are rarely focus of digitization efforts, uh, meaning their content is especially at risk of being lost to the digital era. Hence, this webinar focuses on the real time here and now, and we are far less focused on the past. Technology advancement around us has finally made a real digitization of facility management possible and affordable. And it was a driver in incremented efficiency and gradual process improvement. The two main drivers for the digital future of FM, firstly, the explosive development and demand in the consumer world, consumer world for the technology, uh, making digital solution affordable for professional usage. You know? uh, second, the construction industry is going digital at a rapid pace. On the other hand, projects are implementing design and site management technology for most AEC processes. Okay, uh, with us right now, we have Associate Professor Technologist Dr. Nur Hizam Shafi'i. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, he's a, our guest speaker for today. He's a, you know, he is a university lecturer and also a Deputy Dean a Networking and Alumni at the Faculty of Information, Science and Technology of University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Okay, before we start, I have a few housekeeping items. Uh, everyone is on mute, and if you have any question for our speaker, please feel free to enter them into a chat box session, and we'll be addressing a questions uh, at the end of the session, or uh, you can also ask by raising your hand at the participant section of your Zoom interface. We also, uh, and for your information, we're also recording this, and recorded version for today's webinar will be available on demand after the live session. Without any further ado, uh, I would like to turn over to our panels tonight, uh, Prof. Dr. Nurizam. Over to you, Prof. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ahmad uh, Sharainon. Uh, nice to meet you and uh, the rest. I saw like more than uh, 48 participants, eh? excluded you, yourself, and myself. Eh? Very good uh, program. In which for tonight, we're going to, I'm going to deliver a talk on this uh, so called. Uh, actually, it's a journey to the digital uh, transformation, digital world kind of that. Eh? Yeah. So basically, I am uh, Nur Hizam, uh, Deputy Dean. I just a brief introduction. Eh? Deputy Dean uh, at the Faculty of Information Science and Technology, University of Bangsaan, Malaysia, based here in Bangi. I have had a more than 26 years experience ranging from in a private university, running my own company, work with the United Nations, and a few consultancy uh, uh, in, in uh, what we call it in uh, IT or information technology world. So basically during my uh, one hour 
or less than that, uh, you can interject in the chat box as mentioned by our moderator. Uh, feel free, yeah. So make it more like a very uh, comfort comfortable, informal, cozy, not like a lecturer, since I'm a lecturer. Eh? Uh, so it's not a lecture base. It's like a knowledge sharing. Whatever maybe I know I will share with you based on my experience as consultant. One of uh, maybe quite relevant to you is uh, in 2016, I have uh, developed a so-called enterprise architecture. Enterprise architecture meaning to say like it's a IT strategic planning for our Ministry of Public Works, eh? Kementerian Kerja Raya lah. Eh? And one of my PhD students based in Iraq, she done, uh, she's doing a, a PhD research on BIM. Lah. So more or less, I have had an idea so with, with digital in construction industry, kind of that. Yeah, feel free lah, uh, to ask. Okay. okay. Uh, I have a, what we call it, a slide that I might share with you. It's quite lengthy, wordy kind of a lecture, but more or less, uh, you can ask kind of that. Eh? Okay, okay, I'll share with you now. Eh? Okay, can you see? Yes, yeah. Okay, I'll make it a slide. Normally, I don't like to have like a slide show, but should be okay. Lah, eh? Okay. Uh, as mentioned just now, transfers <coughs> a journey yeah, to digital world. Why digital? We are now, what? Previously, maybe, are you the uh, digital native or digital immigrant? Oh, that's uh, a new word. <laughs> ask yourself, it's more than 20 years ago, actually. If you are maybe a Z generation, like our children or grandchildren, if you have one, eh, I believe that they are the so-called gen, uh, generation, generation Z, eh? Z uh, yeah. millennial, yeah. millennial, eh? yeah. uh, millennial meaning to say that when they wake up, even we ourselves, eh? uh, we are actually surrounding, surrounded by the so-called uh, social media. And just now we mentioned about Netflix, for example. Before this 30 minutes, I to suit myself, relax, I hear the Spotify. So these are actually among the so-called technologies that is relevant to us. We are actually at the so-called moving into the digital transformation in the world of IR4, not in senior 4, eh? IR, <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Industrial Revolution 4. Why 4? And then you need to uh, learn or read the story of the 1, 2, 3 before this. So that is another session. Lah. Huh? Because in this particular session, we cannot run away from the so-called digital or destructive, uh, destructive technology, or in Malay we call it technology pengganggu, and not gangguan halus halus lah. Nothing to do with that. Eh? <laughs> okay, meaning to say, you imagine, it's only like five years ago. We we I think less than that, or oh, five years ago when we want to call a taxi, maybe at the roadside taxi, and now using the apps. If I'm hungry now in my office, I just call the food panda. If I want to go to the uh, cinema, only using the apps. Or uh, why we want, I want to go to cinema? You can have the Netflix huh, at your comfort of your home. Imagine. Yeah. In which five years ago, you can see Asia, for example. Huh? How actually? Huh? Uh, now what? Capital A, A capital. Huh? Already changing the scenario. So these are basically the so-called a uh, destructive, eh? destructive digital technology, which actually influence us, which actually affect of affecting our life, not only in our normal life or new normal life after the first April of our endemic, eh? new normals uh, with the our new life. Yeah, the new life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now we are moving into that. Mm -hmm. That is on the digital world. Maybe people will say digital world. Automating, automation, like you are using AutoCAD. That is actually not really. Eh? People will say paperless or paperless. If you are in maybe some of the country, particularly quite, I would say, advanced country in the Middle East, for example, if you are in UAE, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Qatar, uh, Kuwait, or Saudi Arabia, most of them at the moment, eh, they are very highly in usage of the so-called digital technology. 
In fact, in UAE, I just visited back in the Dubai Expo last December. Eh? Yeah. They do have this Ministry of Artificial Intelligence. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Ministry of Happiness. How to become happy? They have the minister. And how to become very tech savvy? They have this Ministry of AI. Imagine how the balance yeah, in a small state. I believe as well in Singapore also. Imagine how uh, we are uh, utilizing or manipulating on the usage of digital world in the right way, particularly in the FM, in the facilities management. Yeah? Okay, next. Okay, if you see here, what is actually uh, welcome uh, to the journey of digital world? Maybe in this so-called, uh, uh, my dear audience, competitive or VUCA world, it's a business terminology, uh, we use it. At the letter of this slide, I'll share with you. Maybe you will say, WUCA, WUCA, what is that actually? This, this things, eh? competitive, quickly changing world. Huh? We always maybe normal, the, uh, uh, normal people will only learn about Microsoft Word, PDF, spreadsheet, a kind of that. Eh? Huh? That is actually maybe 20, 25 years ago. Yeah, it's something wow impact. Uh, but at the moment, in fact, if you see that the QR code scan also is already, I would say, obsolete, but still we can use that. Eh? Okay, we can have a very good FM processors, uh, yet eh, probably disjointed. Why? Because of the human factors. Eh? Remember that you can have a very good, I always believe in these three things. Eh? You have the so-called uh, technology. You have the people, you have the processes. Huh? Yeah. But if you could not join them together, particularly when we are dealing with human huh? processes, business process, operation, etc., very easy. You can have read the manual or just Google the internet. And you have the technology you can buy from the US, from the UK, whatever it is. Yet, we manage the people huh? how to ask them, okay, now we are going to do this digitalization in the uh, company please before you come you just log in and uh, no longer we are using pen and pencil to write your attendance for example or just scan that is very simple but some very difficult i like to just write like the mass theater you go to the mama restaurant sometime okay you just simply use the paper i mean the the pencil or pen and you just write superman one two three four five your telephone number am i right huh? yeah. okay so digitizing is always Theoretically, if you are not really properly planned in your FM, it should reduce your cost, improve occupants experience, and technically keep our top management bosses happy. In fact, in the university also, the management also, yeah, we go for digital things kind of that. But normally, at the top management in your companies as well, number one, bottom line in the company, what? Dollar and ten. Uh, written on investment ROI, not simply very catchy. If you want, if you want to make a comparison with UAE, Qatar, everything, they have the oil money. We can buy everything. They said, okay, then they spend for the citizens. Uh, they don't bother about this ROI. But us, or when we are running a corporations, we need to see that. Uh, remember, eh? not everything. I would say that. Uh, we need to digital digitize everything. Yeah? Therefore, uh, we, we need to have a transformative mindset uh, when we are making our journey yeah, to the so-called uh, digital transformation. Yeah? Okay. Next slide. Okay. So the closest we could get, yeah, uh, this is actually... Uh, I try to share later uh, four key steps uh, for starting your digital transformation is in FM or in the construction uh, industry. Eh? Okay, what's the difference? Huh? Digitizing means what? Putting our current paper processors, eh? our current paper processors into a digital format. Yeah. Maybe, for example, you are writing, jotting down. Uh, jotting down scribble and nowadays no longer you are using even voice over uh, you can use your voice to to type it can automatically write no longer like 10 years ago i feel like can you do that and now it's already materialized eh? uh, maybe one day you think 
Huh? Yeah, just R and D, uh, research on that, and then they can scribble down what you are actually thinking. Uh, you just maybe have an intention, and suddenly it's like a magic. I don't know, maybe yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah it might happen actually. Yeah, before that, maybe I still remember my first job back in 1996. Yeah, uh, with uh, using the AutoCAD, uh, HR and AutoCAD for one of the Japanese construction company. Uh, con con uh, contractor when we are uh, building this. Uh, I would say lah, uh, maybe can disclose lah. Uh, Lorong Kuda Access opposite the KLCC Twin Tower. Uh, the Twin Tower, remember one is Komagai Gumi and one yeah, one yeah. so kind of that. Uh, if you're in the uh, construction, there's underpass, I think. Yes, the underpass is under Mitsui Construction Company Limited. Uh. The company already gone back to Japan lah. <laughs> so underpass. we learn about this digital. Yes, it's true. In construction, it's not really easy to have a buy-in about digital. Things, digitization, digital transformation. In fact, 20, 25 years ago, you will get time when we have this AutoCAD, the plotter, the 3D. Wow, the machine is like 20,000 ringgit, 25,000. Eh? So we feel like, oh, this is actually about technology. Eh? But it's more than that, actually. At the end, when we bought all these tools, AutoCAD, the plotter kind of thing, a huge machine, not really, uh, we. I would say the word appreciate uh, because we don't have the direct, the, 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 the correct mindset. Uh, maybe because when maybe you listen from me or you just read from the internet, yeah, nowadays uh, the under me, they have this uh, uh, IR for forward. Uh, okay. Then we can have like 200,000, 300,000 if you go for this digital transformation. The government even need to give grant to knock us, to hit us, hey, why don't you use digital technology? Uh, but sometimes we feel like skeptical. How actually can maximize our profit, number one. Number two, optimize the resources. Normally in companies like that, maybe if you're in public sector, in the government sector, it's okay, everything is there. But I believe most of you are working for the corporation, for the companies, medium perhaps kind of thing. Bottom line still, we are talking about the so-called dollar and cent lah, ringgit. Eh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Basically, if you see here, transformation on the other hand is basically how the integration processes to put in place eh? and actually change the way we do things. Very good examples is our BIM software. In fact, I think uh, last year I invited one of the uh, one of my colleagues lah. Is doing this uh, project management software with the 3D, uh, not only on the paper. Let's say the construction, they can show uh, the 3D modeling, the progress of the so called uh, project management. Uh, imagine, uh, I never heard of that yeah, like 20, 25 years ago, but now they are doing that for the, our Kementerian Kejeraya as well. Lah. Again, with the BIM, you don't have to select, for example, four point on screen. Remember, that's why. The word, eh? uh, Mr. Moderator, yeah. blueprint. Blueprint, yeah. Remember that. Uh, 100, maybe 200 years ago, people need to have a very nice maybe drawing. In fact, when you're learning uh, architecture 20, 25 years ago, drawing and everything. Yeah. We uh, learned how to write again, actually, yeah. those days. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Lukisan technical, technical yeah. drawing. If you go to college vocational, to call yeah. vocational, uh, no uh -huh. software, everything uh, during that time. Lah, eh? And yeah. nowadays with the beam and with this, uh, there are many tools, eh? many software that can assist us in the uh, construction industry as well. Lah, eh? I would say on that. Eh? In fact, for example, the usage of geographical information system. Huh? To do yeah. for the mapping in the GPM, <clears throat> for example. In fact, our Ministry of Health as well, we have the so called uh, data warehouse mm -hmm. just to have the mapping of, of our COVID 19 cases lah, in the state, in the district, so we can have to mitigate which area is in the red area, blue area, kind of that. Huh? So that's actually the tools for the uh, epidemiology yeah, purpose eh? uh -huh. to curb the. Uh, what we call it, uh, disease. Eh? Okay, next. Okay, this is basically when we are talking about either we go for digitization or transformation. Eh? What is digitization? Set of data, eh? 
or processes which done with a paper or manually and created a computerized instead of your writing okay we computerize them that is actually very easy in which we started in Malaysian public sector government also like uh, when we have this multimedia super corridor lah, back in 1996-97 yeah. eh, government, government on electronic they call it yes uh, GOE yeah. <laughs> And now later, actually, we do have the so-called digital transformation or digital world. Add the technology to improve and change the form of appearance in our process. By the way, the transformation will include, uh, as I mentioned, people, the yeah. so-called mindset, change management, not to change our management, eh? change management, the attitude, the aptitude. As you mentioned, maybe we are talking about this my sejahtera. 90% of people are using smartphone. What happened to the people in the rural area? Huh? Transformation. Maybe if you're talking in UAE, probably most of them, they are using smartphone or in the UK or in the US. If, in fact, in, the Jap in Japan as well, not everyone have the smartphone, for example. Yeah. Huh? Imagine. You can see, this is actually the transformation need to have a culture, budaya, a culture mm. of digital transformation to receive or not. And it depends on the industry. If you are probably in the IT-based company, for example, in maybe you are in IBM or in banking institution, more or less. Eh? In Malaysia, gradually, slowly, I have a discussion with a colleague mentioned about in Ministry of Work as well, uh, in one of their providers, slowly or gradually, eh? mm -hmm. in, in uh, construction industry as well, moving forward on the FM. And I still remember before I landed the job with this uh, uh, mid suite construction, uh, one of the contractor to now uh, Menara Telecom, Menara oh, okay. Perubung guy, contractor okay. called me. Maybe they don't know my CV. Uh, can you do something like building intelligence maintenance? 1996, I was a uh, building uh, intelligent building maintenance using software. IBMS intelligent yes, building maintenance. During that time. Just to go for the door, for the security, yeah. thumbprint, and everything. He's already advanced during that time. Eh? Yeah. Already advanced. So that is actually more on automation. Eh? Not really we go. And at the moment, I believe with the package, eh, package of so-called digital mindset. If you're talking, eh, uh, on this uh, digital twin, eh, uh -huh. digital twin. Uh, all these are the destructive technologies uh, in yeah. in any area of our life. We can we cannot run away. Actually, uh, we need to what we call it uh, accommodate, uh, try to assimilate with those technology. Eh? Some people could not uh, could not accept why uh, this thing happens now. Huh? Uh, that's why back to my digital uh, digital native or digital immigrant. Are we a digital native? Uh, I myself, I would say that I'm only a digital immigrant also, although I'm in the IT. Lah. Huh? So still that uh, we need to embrace those technology with a culture, a change of mindset. Eh? Okay. Okay. Next. Uh, this is basically power of transforming. Uh, transforming. Remember, for example, eh, uh, technology company, if you know of Aerodyne, eh, drone, drone technology. Our Malaysian is already number one or number two. Uh, the CEO came to my faculty two or three years ago. How actually you landed with this very, I would say, like, very lucrative job? I say, okay, so he said, uh, TNB invited us to use the drone to check on the tower. Oh, yeah. Instead of you climbing the tower in the middle of the jungle, yeah. they say maybe there are some tigers, and they just call tigers, but they were take an elephant. Might as well, they use a drone for a few kilometers. The industrial drone, not the small 500 ringgit drone that my my kids are playing, eh? or I myself playing. Eh? So they're using that. Eh? So that is an example of usage because it's actually make our life easy. Instead, you need to climb or you need to climb to the roof, use the drone, and you can check to use the camera, a very high resolution camera that can take the so-called uh images huh, of the what we call it uh, the roof a rack or whatever it is lah. so yeah. that is a good example huh? and then we do have a so-called iot means internet of things huh? internet of things is probably you're using the drone on the internet there's a 
or you have your own, our own, maybe our, if you see like LG refrigerator, eh, they have this internet, uh, internet uh, access uh, on that. Or in fact, in our car, some of the cars also, uh, our driverless car, uh, like Tesla, for example, one day quite become cheap, probably, uh, I hope in Malaysia, not the 200 or quarter million ringgit, for example, yeah, Tesla car. So it's, going, then, it's going down, bro. <laughs> yeah, IoT, so you just sleep in your car, uh, maybe uh, going to Kuala Lumpur. I sleep from Bangi to Kuala Lumpur. I hope not end up in JB lah, maybe. Yeah. Then, then they can go with the, the camera, uh, the so-called few uh, sensors and everything. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah, we are actually moving into that. Lah, yeah. So these are basically uh, some of the so-called uh, transforming lah, our facilities uh, management uh, using uh, IoT, HVAC. Huh? Our heat ventilation and aircon using huh? sensor in the, for, for example, in the data center. Huh? Nowadays, people don't go for data center, we go for cloud. Huh? But still, huh? but what is cloud? Huh? Dr. Nohizam talking cloud. Huh? Your Gmail is cloud. Your Spotify, your Netflix is actually based on cloud. It's actually a, a pool of servers. Huh? Servers huh? is actually, that is actually, a, I can say, the data center. Huh? Data center, but we don't know where is the location. If it's a physical bare metal, we call it, uh, that is very structured. Lah. Uh, eh? Still, how to test in that specific area? You, we use the sensor for the HVAC. Yeah? HVAC is related to our FM. Eh? Okay, next slide. Okay, automation versus manual. Uh, remember that, are you going for the manual towards automation or towards the so-called digitization? or digital transformation. So please think, we need to have a different mindset to have that, eh? to, to, to have this specific. Eh? Sorry, that actually, actually, I also presented at this 2022. That's why that is up there huh? on the slide. Eh? Okay. Okay. What's the benefit? There are many lah, benefit of that, eh? of digitization. Weak point, rework, double work. Eh? inefficiency, it, particularly in our business process workflows. Uh, again, as a project manager in FM, communication, and 90% of our project manager is actually working uh, towards to make the, achieve the project to be complete on time uh, uh, between the teams. Uh. Again, automate the manual, repetitive or very time consuming tasks, better organized, structured, uh, and you can do the analytics of the data. Remember that when you, after this, let's say, I give you the example. After this, the video being recorded and put on the YouTube. Do you think the YouTube or on the FB, they are not using? How many students, uh, sorry, how many learners, 67 now, and 69 ex excluded two of us. Then they will see who's actually coming in. And from there, you will see at your right or left on the specific software advertisement. Huh? FM advertisement, software, tools, and everything. So that's actually the, our meta or Facebook. Actually, they are using the data or YouTube to promote the so-called advertisement in which they charge sponsored advertisement. Uh, when you click 0.02 cent, for example, or oh, there's uh, some calculation on that. Eh? Remember that uh, integrate data silos into a single source of truth. This is very, very, I would say, at the moment, theoretically or technically, you can say like single source of truth. Huh? The single source of truth, for example, for, for us, ourselves, what is actually the single source of truth? Any example? If you, maybe my name is Nor Hizam Safi, key primary, I'm only a one in Malaysia. You can Google our ID, our IC number, huh? like mine, 720701. 14, uh, 5575. But remember, I have my student working in the JPN, uh, uh, National Registry. You Even you can ask and request to change your ID number. You you want to look young, you can request. You have friends over there. Yeah, still not a single source of truth. Because when, let's say, uh, like the Ministry of AI in United Arab Emirates, they have this single source of truth for one person with... Uh, passport number or the ID for their country. Huh? So they can refer your ID, your address, your account number, your house number, phone number. But at the end, you as a citizen, you will say like the American, 
you are actually intruding my what? Privacy. I have my own area for privacy. Why you want to go in? But you as a government, I need to uh, see, to monitor. Like people mention my sejahtera. Do you know that the Ministry of Health mentioned to me, every time we scan, 25 cents. Eh? Uh, Mr. Ahmad, eh? 25 cents. Imagine, one day you go to the shopping mall, 20. Berapa tu already? Uh, more, uh, your kids and everything, 20, 30 ringgit. Uh, because we send and we keep in the, what we call it, uh, data. And okay. remember, okay. when you are contractor to the government of Malaysia, GOM, GOM, not Gotham City, yeah, Batman, eh? GOM. Uh, data is belongs to the government. Not to the third party to sell to the marketing guy to now we go uh, uh, Meta we yeah. change the name to not uh, Facebook or whatever lah. But who knows? That's why our cloud in Malaysia just recently we have the government allow to have our cloud provider like Alibaba Cloud, AWS, Amazon Web Services to be in Malaysian soil in Cyberjaya near if you know nearby this uh, Telecom R&D. Before this, it was in Singapore. Singapore. Yeah. Imagine. So these are actually, oh yeah, it's good. The drawback is of digitization is about our intruding our personal uh, areas and kind of that. Eh? And it's not easy lah, to get the single source of truth. I would say that. Eh? Okay. Because I'm having one project with the Ministry of Higher Education, Data Integrity Policy. Oh. I need the university need to have a setup of policy for the ministry. For the MQA, PT, PTN, the ministry to talk. Otherwise, why I want to share with you the data? According to this legal data, I cannot share with you. Although in one. Why? Because it's uh, about our students, citizens, their rights and everything. Yeah, imagine. It's not easy, actually. Yeah? Okay, next slide. Okay, real time. Collecting and input asset data. Particularly when you want to tagging data. Huh? Maybe you're using the QR code scan, OCR. There are many. Huh? Uh, this is one of the technology lah, that we, we can use on that. Eh? Okay. okay. Uh, we are talking about the so-called uh, four steps eh, towards transformations eh, in facilities management. Uh, back to like a uh, blueprint. Lah, eh? First, you need to identify any opportunities and create a plan. Normally, opportunities is not about theory lah, or opportunities, the opportunities. But again, bottom line, dollar and cent. Lah. No money, no talk. Eh? <laughs> remember that. Yeah. Uh, okay, second, move off paper-based floor plans. Uh, third, deliberately try to implement our software and start uh, mapping major asset. Lah. So we go uh, one by one. Eh? Okay, opportunities. Okay, uh, what goals do you want to hit? What kind of technology do you want to adopt? Uh, don't simply, oh, people are talking about destructive technology. Uh, last night, uh, Dr. Nohizam of your PM talking about this technology. So I would like to ask my C-level to buy. Okay. You must have the so-called the best solution and easiest. Uh, depends. You need to purchase something that everyone in the company can accept, easy to learn, not something like from your IT department will come. Ah, okay, take this. Gone actually the day in which I would say that the IT department simply force you, take it or leave it. Uh, like our my sejahtera also, it's, technically I would say take I, it or leave it as well. Uh. I <laughs> think there is uh, actually even the user interface also. Uh. That's uh, the yeah. buzzword of the IT department those days. Take it or yeah. leave it. <laughs> yeah, take it or leave it. I'm the one. Huh? Nowadays, it's like a user-centered design. You need to have our user, like you yourself, participate. Give the ideas. Because we are the one that using it, not the IT people. IT people, sometimes the Malay word, they, we call it shock sendiri. They just do it. Oh, the colors is nice. The button here and there. And you simply, my goodness. Sometimes if you download from our Apple Store or our Android uh, Play Store, huh? Some uh, people freely they upload, and when you download, is something like I would say like rubbish lah. <laughs> because these are young, it's good for the young generation. Small company they are trying free of charge, they upload. Huh? Okay, it depends. They need to put us as the so-called user interface or user experience UI UX. No longer even in the university we call it as human computer interaction 
or last time in the 50s or 60s, man machine interaction in the engineering, man machine. Then the woman will say, where's the woman? Only men are using the machine. Now we change to, that is in the engineering. Then we call it HCI, human computer interaction. Now UI UX, UI. user interface, user experience. experience. When you're using the ATM machine, how? Yeah. The colors, maybe the brightness, and for the people with the could not read, maybe it's supposed to be like this, an audio over there. Yeah. Huh? Imagine. Yeah? Okay, any questions so far? <coughs> uh, I think uh, we are collecting the questions so far. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay so no. okay. feel free to uh, feel free to ask questions, eh, guys. You know, yeah, this yeah. is open discussion. You know? huh. Okay, there is one. Eh? Yeah. Our personal data is at stake. If my sejahtera is sold to third party indeed, uh, that's the issue lah. You must remember that we as a citizen of Malaysia or in the US, we have this HIPAA, H -I -P -A -A, or in the Europe, we have GDPR, right? just Google lah, GDPR, HIPAA, I just write down here lah, eh? H -I -P -A -A, just check that lah, US or GDPR, huh? Europe, uh, more or less HIPAA, sorry eh? HIPAA is actually protecting us as a citizen. Huh? Okay, HIPAA, eh? uh, US, GDPR, uh, Europe. Uh, kita in Malaysia, we do have this PDPA, supposed to be 2010, but yet uh, 2014 lah, table in the government. Uh, it's actually protecting us. They cannot take our data. But in fact, when we go to the shopping mall, if we go here and there, actually, they can trace uh, the third party is supposed to But the data is supposed to be at the government, not at their third party contractor state. Ah, yeah? That's the issue. Very, very nice, very nice question. And uh, okay, why is the difficult transformation difficult? Uh, again and again, uh, moderator, I think it's actually our mindset. Are we really open to accept or really what's the purpose? Uh, then I ask this Emirati, this guy in the UAE, how come you're a very small state and then uh, you can all have all this? In fact, they're using the gantry for this toll. <laughs> Load on the every car, 150 dirham. You are not actually now, we are not RFID, smart tag, and blah, blah. It's actually who's actually at the stake? We are the citizen. I myself, I say, I oh, never mind. I just simply, although I'm IT guy, I don't use. I okay lah. Uh, just smart pack or just a uh, normal uh, yeah, touch and go. Imagine mm. for them country, you can see Singapore as well. Why don't you want you need to queue? This is a very simple automation, eh? not a really a digital transformation. No. Yeah. yeah. Normal automation already Singapore. I think ten years ago already had that. Uh, UAE or some countries also, but in Malaysia, yeah, you can see. Why is so difficult? Uh, yeah? Okay, okay. Next, uh, move of papers are supposed to be last time. If the toll you have, okay. Uh, uh, imagine, eh, I have the opportunity when I work with the United Nations to some countries in the Africa. You go and maybe some of you have already been to Kenya eh, twice to Kenya. Uh, they have a very less than one kilometer, like a. Uh, I don't know, like uh, you mentioned the Desa Kudalari, uh, maybe. Uh, we are dark, it's very small, and the rest is like a Jalan Tanah Merah. Lah. It's not a tar route as well, but it's a very modern, very nice in Nairobi. Imagine. And to them, this is something modern. If we make a comparison with Malaysia, Singapore, and the others, we still still okay. Lah. They never heard of this toll, for example. So I would say that. Lah. But they are trying to become a developed nation. And I believe that we can move forward. Huh? move forward lah, eh, despite of this new new what we call it uh, new life or new world order not really new world order lah, uh, yeah. okay next thirdly software development whether you buy the solution customize if you have the expertise buy off the shelf but still you need to customize or outsource to third party in my case as well i outsource to india uh, to Bangaluru and Ahmedabad. Why? Because they have a very good expert over there. Not really we have the expertise even in Malaysia. And it's not cheap actually, although in India, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, nowadays, uh, in IT, imagine. 
And the problem sometimes, they are technical people, they are coding, they are do, they, uh, we call it coder lah, programmer. But we, as the user, we need to do the so-called business process, transfer their ideas to this developer or coder. And it's not easy. The documentation, everything. Huh? To suit our need, our requirement, to suit our customer usage, the user center, as I mentioned just now. Huh? Yeah. So, but we fail. <laughs> we fail to put up the requirement <laughs> properly. You know that's why we. It's yeah. not because of the they are not good, but we are not properly, uh, preparing what we actually want. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What we want actually is what we need or want. Sometimes we say yeah. we need or really we want. Yeah. There are two different things. Huh? You don't have the proper study. That's why. Uh, According to the standish, standish studies, standish studies about the IT project management, more than what 90% project fails. And I thought only Malaysia. You know, in the UK, we have the, they have this like our Ministry of Health, NHS, mm -hmm. NHS, eh? National Health Services. Okay. Yeah. I don't know whether whether the British people are stupid or not. I would say stupid. After 12 billion. I don't know, dollar or pound, then only the stock of the database for IT project. You can Google. 12 billion. I said, how come? Why don't they mitigate at 1 billion or 2 billion? I said, they're up to <laughs> billion. So, Mati, I said, oh, not really. Then I, when I went to this uh, so-called, uh, I have a chance also to visit London I think about 10 years ago, read in the newspaper, of their newspaper. Uh, the Scotland Yard also have this kind of issues of the IT things. Then I said, oh, no wonder. I don't think so. Like, they are actually much better than us or we are better than them. More or less, we as a human being are the same. Whether you are from India, China, I have some of my students from India, China, or the UK, it's similar. Uh, how actually you open our mind, hey, what we want to do? Do the proper study, feasibility study. Uh, and then you have the so-called like, software development, POC not for a proof of concept of prototyping then they want to have the jargon we call it poc and now they have this sandbox oh sandbox it's like <laughs> we are actually drawing at the uh beach lah. Beach. Uh, the testing, lah. Oh, testing testing, testing. testing. Uh, we ask you should if you, the company software come to you okay give us three months six months test integrate as long as our user happy or us one year negotiate this is how test the facilities every in and out the features then only you record then you can propose to your management don't simply oh very nice normally what the marketing people will come to you sorry if there's a marketing guy here also i'm also last time when you've been one of the it company we got to sell the moon and the star to you <laughs> huh? everything very nice and everything and then once you sign the contract bye bye and then the the guy is going to do all the sorry the so called the word shit works huh? and the IT people. Why the marketing said we can do this and that? Uh, they got their the so called bonus and everything, and we are the IT people need to do the coding, the programming, according the bye bye bye. And okay, now I pass to the IT people to do. Eh? Uh, that's that's the issue lah, about this software development. I believe as well in Malaysia, if you see starting from the so called our multimedia super corridors, some of the government agencies, very good example, my Sejahtera, or when the renewal of the passport system, eh? uh, government money actually bleeding, there's a lot of things la, in the IT. That's why I think one of the reasons I joined the academics la, rather than in the, <laughs> before this in the, in the industry, la, I would say that, eh? you feel like, wow, actually, open our mind really that we are sincere we develop the nation because i said this guy this arabs guy 30 40 years ago they are only uh what very small oyster or fisher, fisheries uh, village at dubai qatar and now they are much more than this why they have this focus although they have this oil and gas and everything but the way they have this mindset the transformation along the way lah, eh? okay number four when you want to map your major asset, this is also a, an issue as well in even in my university as well. When you do the asset tagging, eh? in the government agency, even the door, the room, the chair, the table, and everything, millions. Eh? Uh, sometimes we could not what we call it uh, track after what the 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 pelupusan after seven years, after how many years? Uh, 
Huh? That's the issue. Huh? In facilities management as well. Huh? Tagging of the toilet bowl and everything. I don't know what's the word. Huh? How is actually. Uh, so the compliance and maintenance lah, of all these assets. Huh? How to have those not to be overlapping lah, among the processes that you are going to consolidate. Yeah? Okay, any other question that I check on this? Three attendance. Eh? Okay, I just check. But it's actually a uh, last of being still very traditional. To what extent, eh, uh, Tamil one and eh, thanks, eh, uh, digital transformation has disrupted the FM industry in Malaysia. Well, what we notice is the last mile of the service being provided. Still, yeah, conventional FM services eh, like MNE, cleaning, pest control, landscaping, eh, a kind of that. Eh. Uh, I would say that eh, Tamil, eh, Tamil one eh, thanks for the your question. Still, still, basically, we are not really uh, going there. Eh? In fact, our medical doctor also not really, I would say, comfortable with the usage of this digital uh, technology. In fact, uh, in UKM, we do have our own uh, faculty of medicine as well. Uh, still, they go for this kind of uh, traditional base. Although we have this micro surgical uh, tools from Samsung sponsored uh, kind of that, but still we are relying. We are trying to have when we see that in 1997 when we have this telemedicine, uh, telemedicine kind of thing, the first in the world. Everything in Malaysia we start with the first in the world. Uh, yeah. yeah. With all this X, 1997, digital signature, 1997, computer crime, 1996. I still remember because I did my master's in 1997. I need to have all this X. Remember in my exam, lah, yeah. time, I did my master part time. Huh? So what happened is, uh, not really, I would say, revised back to have the so-called digital transformation in our like in our kpj in our columbia university uh, sorry columbia hospital for example because uh, i have some of my students from kpj i thought as well for the kpj kpj staff eh? so they are still reviving but still people still skeptical people still like a hey, first the technology is is not cheap when they know you are from government government coffer oh very good so the marketing people will come, okay, try to sell you the moon and the star, lah, I will say that. Huh? Bulan dan bintang, everything. And then at the end, you could not get the solution. Eh? Okay, now we move to... Okay, okay. Just to share about the so-called WUKA. Anyone heard of this WUKA in this so-called our... Uh, life, eh? maybe in MBA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Uh, this is the word, the military term, lah, basically. Eh? Uh, we need to have, uh, we need to have a so-called set of WUKA in FM issues of digital transformation. Eh? Later, I can share the slide with the, the, with the organizer. Lah, eh? Okay, we need to have a new WUKA. What is that? We need to have vision. Huh? Gone already lah, our vision 2020 lah. Now we have 2030 lah, wawasan kemakmuran. Eh? Later we can see another eight years from now. Eh? Is it going to be materialized or not? Mm -hmm. eh? Vision, understanding, clarity and agility. So that is the new positive side of VUCA rather than the previous one. Eh? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. Uncertain with the war in Russia and Ukraine and people who are actually now, my word, eh, investing or playing the Bitcoin cryptocurrency, now is actually zooming down. Most of my friends, oh, Dr. Izzam, you have any part-time or full-time work? Eh? Now, the salary was 15,000, 16,000, resigned from private uni. Why? Oh, now I have this every month, two years. And now, 500 ringgit only per month. Imagine, I don't know which kind of coin, lah, eh? Bitcoin, whatever coin, lah, eh? imagine. This is actually about the war, the endemic, now from pandemic to endemic, uh, and our shooting off of the inflation, uh, pricing of food and everything. Uh, back in 2010, when I first time visited Sudan, I have a mission over there. I saw that very expensive everything. 60 ringgit for uh, bread, ice cream and everything. People going to have cash. And now in Malaysia, in fact, you go to Speedmart also quite okay. Lah. Still very expensive. Imagine how. 
this is actually the world of the VUCA. But we need to have this new VUCA, our vision in FM. How? Again, eh? understand the technology. Don't simply blindly, you okay, the marketing guy come, you buy. Need to get the clarifications, for example, and agile, okay, flip flop, okay, give me three months, last six months of the usage of the technology. Then only we can maybe intend to buy or not. Okay, next, this is the vision, actually the description. Uh, we're going towards actually the answer. Another eight minutes, uh, the understanding, uh, clarity, and the agility. Okay, at the end, to have uh, solve any digital transformation issues or problem in FM or in our digital world, we should embrace and add the new VUCA in this new normal uh, at the endemic, uh, the vision, understanding, clarity, and Agility. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. I open the session to questions uh, and uh, pass back over to you to the moderator, Cik Ahmad uh, Sharainon. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, I think I, I like the, the notion of the VUCA. It's changing from negative to a positive sign. So, volatiles to vision. So, <clears throat> is it that currently we are not preparing our vision properly? And then we are not really understand what are the needs of digital worlds that we require. Okay. Yeah, please, please. And then that's also affected to the other activity, the, the, other, the other two. Because the first one, we are not able to set the right vision. And the second one is the second one is understanding what actually we need. You know? Yes. Yeah. I think again and again. That's why I, I, I always also educating my students as well, or we as a citizens, or again, as a normal human being. Eh? Clarification, the vision, what we want in the life for the country development, the usage of technology in the digital world. Eh? Need to study the proper eh? technology. Maybe the technology is not being used in the US, and that's why they come and sell to us. Check particularly on the licensing, on the intellectual property, who's actually own the IP, who's actually own the data. Now the master data maybe is going to have that yeah, data. I don't believe when they sell about it, they just read two days ago, right? It's very good issue. I can uh, teach in my class. Meaning to say that uh, it is not about two years ago when we're coming, okay, this software come to us, we need to actually study, check, not to have it on urgent matters. Huh? And you need to have a very clear, clear what we call it, ideas about what is technology, the hindrance, huh? whatever it is. Huh? Uh, vision is very important. And that the clarity, the usage, do you need, do you need it or not? Like at one time, when I proposed this specific technology, uh, the, the first time when I visited UAE, I said, we can buy anything from the US or the UK. We have the money. Simply, the Arab said like that. Okay, fine. <laughs> but we want to have, what's your solution? Can it really solve the solution or not? We want that. We don't care how much you, you, you put the price tag. I can buy. We can buy. Wow. I said, ah. but it is about the solution that can we can use, we can achieve the maintenance, everything, the cost is not increased or not, many other things we need to study. That's why we need, when we are having uh, to purchase something, please get your legal as to advise you as well, your legal, your accounting department as well to check, uh, uh, maybe on paper, particularly uh, the usage of dollars. I mean, because they are using in, in USD, for example, so at one time in 1997, when uh, my, we become the contractor to our uh, JPJ, eh, National Transportation, Transportation Department, eh, one of the software, we, we need to pay like 50,000 ringgit extra to one of the contractors, eh, CA Computers. I don't know whether it's available or not, CA Computers. Eh. So the director, I still remember, Mr. Tan, eh, we, we negotiate with the US company, please, lah, this is for the sake of the government and please don't simply charge and everything. I would say that. that huh? Otherwise, okay, Malaysian government, you have the, the money and everything. Yeah? Blindly, you simply sign. 
But you need to, when you sign everything, you know that is the, what, uh, to me, again, uh, taxpayer money, although for the nation, government sake. But I would say that uh, many IT projects also in Malaysia, uh, never mind, we share just here for the academic purpose. There are 73 of you. Sometimes I would say quite fail. Sometimes when they watch on the TV, this project, these tools and everything, not really, uh, because I have many students in uh, in. I would say in Mampu. Okay, sorry, eh, if there's a Mampu here, I, uh, and and also the consultant to some of the project, and that's the an issue. First, I think vision, clarity, uh, to understand the technology. So that's the issue that we need to see. Do the feasibility study very very important, uh, and check. Uh. Although if after that the scale is. I, we cannot accept, uh, we cannot do much, but we we have the proper record. We already have this, have this user acceptance test and everything. Huh? So people don't blame you huh? yeah. <laughs> until you die. Actually, people will be like, this is the guy, la, no hisam actually. Uh, that's why la, the problem issues here. Uh, yeah, that might happen like that. Huh? We, we want to have a good name actually. Yeah? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, another issue that's when we talk about this again, uh, that we set a vision, we set about the understanding, and then we come up with the requirement, you know, and then of course we targeted to have very very workable solution, you know, and uh, and 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 then yet we forget about to prepare the dollar and cent. Okay. Basically, because, I mean, before that, uh, Prof, eh? it's like we like to buy BMW, you know, but we're not preparing to prepare the budget for that BMW. What do you think? Again, when you hear from my beginning, you know, what you need or you want, you want a Pro 2 or you want a BMW or you want a whatever car lah, in like Ferrari, Lamborghini. Huh? You must aware of the maintenance of the cost of the monthly installment and everything. What is the objective, your vision? You are going from point A to point B, huh? 20 kilometers, for example. You want to have a Ferrari or you want to have only a Perodua? But some people will go for a Ferrari, although or the budget, or sometimes it is not my budget, it's the, my company's budget. That's the issue huh? to me. Huh? You see? Okay, no man, we split it to five years of payment, for example. We have this budget or we request. In Rancangan Malaysia, normally we request for the RMK. Five years lah, you can have that budget. Huh? You can, or every year at June after Hari Raya, after this, you can uh, budget for 2023. Already prepared, eh? public sector. You can request for it. Uh, in the government, I think most of you are aware, uh, you need to spend lah. Uh, it's not like in the private. If there's a saving, it's good. Uh, in the government, if you you still have the saving and next year they'll take back the, the, the money and then you could not get. Huh? I was like shocked lah when I was in the UKM. Oh, it's like different. Huh? I, I mean the public sector accounting and the, in the private. Lah. Okay, Tamil Wanan mentioned uh, in FM industry is very labor intensive, which relies heavily on foreign labors and at the same time, this is causing a low wage regime. Yeah, which has become a major, I think major pandemic, lah, economic issues that we are facing now. Okay, uh, we're trying to uh, get out of this vicious cycle. Is there possibilities of our government providing incentive? Huh? Okay, basically, if you check on this, uh, our MITI, uh, uh, MITI, we have this uh, grant, uh, uh, forward PWD, uh, you can check a uh, MITI, they are actually having this uh, grant for the digital transformation. Uh, like I believe it's like not much, two hundred fifty thousand a kind of that lah. Huh? You can check yeah. on that lah huh? under the, our MIT MIT lah. Huh? They are actually encouraging the SME small medium enterprise, even the multinational corporations in Malaysia to embrace the so-called digital transformation. Uh, whether you are in the FM industry, in the construction industry, eh? you can check on that. Uh, yeah? Okay, let me give you the link lah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll just stop the sharing. Okay, any any others? Any, any other questions? any other questions that uh, the audience or the participant would like to raise? You know, uh, you can also on your uh, unmute your mic. You know, I think I mean you can also share with us. I think feel free to do that. You know, don't worry. You know, we are on the sharing session modes here. Anybody? 
would like to unmute your mic. Yes, Mr. Abdul Malik. Any anything that you like to ask? Oh, this is the link for the for the uh, grant, is it? Uh, prof yes, yes. You can. You need to read first, lah. Actually, huh? incentive grant. If you go for the industry for uh, uh, four point zero, lah. Huh? Any industry, actually, yeah. Okay. So, any question, guys? You know, uh, of course, we are entering to the nine o'clock, actually. So. So if there is any more question from the participant. No, no question. Okay, if there is what? No, I have one last question to you, Prof. Okay. Yeah, please. So this is about this uh, uh, digital transformation and relation to the human behavior. So how can we prepare the human behavior to, to make them uh, uh, ready for the digital transformation? Is it you need to do a lot of uh, courses or trainings or what else you know, to prepare them to, to create the new behavior? Okay, thanks sir, for the final question. Okay, basically one of, uh, one of the uh, education vehicle is like you are organizing this webinar. You don't need to come to have a formal MBA, PhD, a short course kind of that. Just a simple informal to open our mind. First, you need to be very positive. Open our mind. Okay, digital transformation in FM. Very typical. How? But tonight, I share you with the link oh, from MITI. Just Google and check. Oh, they're having this for the companies. Oh, the ideas of digital native or digital immigrant. A uh, few others. More on my sharing on that. Huh? Uh, so again, uh, if you want to move forward to become uh, citizens of developed nations, developed countries, uh, we need to open our mind, keep on learning, lah. learning, relearn or unlearn. Uh, Alvin Toffler, I think 30 years ago, their book uh, already taught, uh, uh, don't learn about something bad, uh, <laughs> relearn. I myself at the age of 50 as well, I uh, learn and relearn whatever. Lah, uh, or maybe the government said, uh, reskill, uh, upskill, or upskill. cross skilling. Cross skilling. Uh, cross skill. Yeah. In IT, in construction, uh, maybe mechanical, electrical. Reskill. If you want to go from I, uh, engineering to maybe to IT, uh, kind of that. Eh? Uh, again, there's a lot of free courses during this. Uh, uh, you go to HRDF lah courses. Eh? I think now they already charge before this is free. Or you simply go to like Coursera. Anyone knows Coursera online, mm -hmm. Udemy, or I just type yeah, link, LinkedIn. Yeah, how to link uh, LinkedIn learning, but you need to pay for the premium. There are many actually yeah. with the certification, <clears throat> try your luck, and then I you can go. Yeah, Coursera, I think, is one of the my favorites, you know, because yeah. uh, with the minimum subscription, actually, yeah, you can do a lot of, I mean, you can learn a lot of things. Exactly. It's serious, you know, I mean, that's something yeah. that the, the, the site that I subscribe is very minimum, but it's not promoting, but this is something that's... Uh, Easy, even even you want to do a programming, you know. Exactly. So you also can learn from that side, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got it from one of the these uh, lady pilots uh, uh -huh. YouTube, you know. So I mean, he she learned from from that website how to do to fly a plane. Not to fly a plane, but to <laughs> do uh how to do these digital things. Uh, yeah. To create their. The YouTube, you know, and it has superb uh, tools that actually available, you know, and it's very minimum, very minimum price for that actually. Exactly. <laughs> so keep on learning, whether you are in a in as an engineer or uh, maybe uh, whatever. I I accept the challenge to be with all of you tonight uh, uh, within this one hour because I myself learning from you yourself. Uh, 
70 plus of you. Eh? That's why eh? uh, if maybe you think after 5 p.m. then I'll I go back lah, better I go. Eh? But I want to share my knowledge, my expertise, maybe as a public uh, uh, university lecturers. How is actually we want if we want to move forward digital uh, journey in FM? Eh? So this is actually how lah. Keep on learning lah. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. If you can have that, eh, that's much better lah. Eh? Yeah, it's true. I think uh, continuing, uh, continuing the learning journey. Uh, even myself, also, I still at the age of forty nine. I'm doing my double master programs. You know, that's great, wonderful. And during this pandemic, I just almost finished my double master program. You know, wonderful. And it's doing yeah. online. You know, so yeah, uh, something yeah. that's uh, yeah. Uh, and then is uh, creating uh, and then be, and not just creating that it become a a reference to others that at forty nine you still can learn you know and improve then the new knowledge or create a new knowledge you know so and there's something that i thought that i cannot do you <laughs> so but now yeah. almost finished you know so it's something That's yeah congratulations because uh the one of the beauty things that we need to do invest in yourself uh, yeah. if we still have our epf not to take yeah sorry yeah for the ten thousand ringgit <laughs> of a minimum 50 to ten thousand ringgit i still now convert to pension lah. no more my epf my account eh? okay invest in yourself and i believe one day you can become a tr uh, sorry trainer webinar uh, influencer at the age of 49 like mr sharaino you never know huh? uh, yesterday i received just to share a bit like i i received a whatsapp call from one of my students uh from african countries now sir i am now migrating uh, relocating to the uk in one of the uni wow you see how from the humble beginning in african countries so because i've been to some of their countries very difficult even even to go to the toilet as well eh? and now they move very proud when they have the phd in malaysia and one of my Iranian students now migrated already to Australia. So why don't you follow me? You join. I say I still have Malaysia like, next time. Like, maybe after retired, I join you. Imagine. So this is actually through education, although not really a formal PhD in FM, whatever, go for the short courses huh? and learn. Go like this webinar kind of thing. Maybe WhatsApp group, uh, Telegram group, learn. Not only about the gossips of politics, rather than you go for the gossiping of this politics, artists, celebrities, you get nothing. You go for this, this knowledge things. Eh? Very good. I really praise uh, most of you when you attended one hour. It's like investment in yourself eh, tonight. Eh? Yeah? Okay. Okay, I think uh, that's all, uh, Mr. Sharanun. Yeah, I think so. Look like we are cover everything. Uh, and then there is a uh, uh, to the speaker. And thank you very much, Prof. I think we appreciate no your problem. time, uh, your sharing, your insight. You know, so uh, and we are glad that you can have uh, uh, non FMers I think shared something new to us. You know, whereby they uh, we, we can open up a new uh, way of thinking and how can we. Uh, Travis to the digital world, you know, and and is there anything, Prof, that you want to uh, before we wrap? I think nothing. Just keep on learning, lah. <laughs> I would say that. Eh? Maybe I don't know. I was born like to, to love to learn. This is actually the link to the PDF, lah. You can read if you want to have about what is a uh, for IR and how to get the grant and everything, lah. I just share it here. Eh? Okay. I think keep on learning. That's all, lah. Because I'm an educator as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Prof. And then, uh, thank you again. Thank you, Prof. Uh, thank you also to everybody. We have 70 people uh, that participating, including two of us. And and thank you, CIDB, for uh, making this webinar success. You know, we appreciate the, uh, the times that given by uh, the CIDB that for us to host this webinar. And uh, we also appreciate for everybody being here. And then we will see you again uh, in after the Ramadan. Uh, we stop during Ramadan month uh, and thank you uh, for joining us. Assalamualaikum and good night.